Welcome back to Sip the Tatter Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're going to take a look at Brandon Thorne's offensive line guy. Now, I was scrolling Twitter, and I saw this guy, and I, I clicked it. I know Thorne's a reputable offensive line guru uh, in the Twitter spaces, not, not the actual spaces, but in the Twitter realm, and I wanted to see what this guy consisted of. So I clicked it, opened it up, and I read like the first couple lines, and I was like, this might be something I, you know, wouldn't mind sharing on the channel. So I read the first couple of lines and I stopped. And I said, well, I'll just come back and when I can do it on, in video form. So what you're going to get here is a is me going through his um, offensive line almanac, so to speak. And we can see what he has to say about it, talk about it. And it's going to be from a Ravens point of view. And so we'll just go through and see where he has the Ravens listed and talk about his point of view for the Ravens and for all offensive line coming up. We got a bunch of different um, categories and we'll get into it on the other side of the intro. Roll the intro. All right, so here it is. He says, we'll go division by division with analysis and fun facts about each offensive line unit. Their rank for each metric league-wide will also be provided. Uh, these will be updated prior to week one once lineups are set. All right, so we got experience level, combined age, youngest to oldest, total draft capital, highest to lowest, combined weight, heaviest to lightest, combined RAS, relative athletic score, Weight adjusted RAS rankings, longest tenured O line coaches, breakout unit, strongest, most powerful player, highest paid unit, best contract value in 2024, their cap dollars, and most representative college football conferences. And then that don't really matter when it comes to Ravens. And uh, we have his takeaway and parting thoughts. But we'll talk about all of these except for the last two for the most part. So let's get right into it and go ahead. Experience level. So in the, we need to go to the AFC North. The Ravens have the 31st, well, they're ranked the 31st in the NFL. So they have the second worst experience level in the NFL. And that's because we got three new starters. We're going to have three new starters. Um, whoever plays right tackle, if it's Rosen Gardner, he won't, won't, don't have any starts. Uh, if, Ben Cleveland starts at right guard. I think Ben Cleveland has about maybe five starts in him, maybe. And then if Voorhees starts at, at left guard, he has zero starts. So that's probably leads to this um this ranking right here. And I, I'm assuming the starts is this number, this 126. I'm assuming. Let's see if it gives me. Combined game start. Yeah, so that's the number of starts. 120, we only have 126. Titans being the last with the worst with 107. We're second to the last in start. Right, let's go to the second column. Combined age. Uh, division rank. Team combined age versus NFL rank. So as far as experience. Go to AFC North. 120. I'm sorry. 145. We're the 29th youngest offensive line in the NFL. Mm. Oh, that's Brown. I'm sorry. We're the fifth youngest in the NFL. I'm sorry. Fifth youngest. I was like, that ain't right. Put all these new guys. Right here, 127. We're tied for the fifth ranked youngest. Fifth youngest in the NFL. We tied with the Steelers. Which, you know, again, same three things. We're probably about to have two rookie starts. Keep in mind, boy, he's a rookie. And then Ben Cleveland in his third year, if I'm not mistaken. Ronnie's an old guy. Um, and I forgot about Linda Bum. Linda Bum's in his third year. He's young too. So I don't let me forget about Linda Bum. I, I think Linda Bum being an old veteran, I kind of forget about him, you know, because he's penciled in to be probably the next great center in the NFL. Let's go see what the third column is. Draft capital. Highest to lowest. We're going to AFC North. Ravens. Tied for 17th highest in the NFL. So that means we 
We haven't spent the most draft capital on the NFL. We're middle of the pack as far as spending draft capital on the O-line. You see, the Steelers are the fourth highest, meaning they spent a bunch on, on the O-line. Browns are the 11th. They spent a good amount. And then the Bengals are the behind us at 30th. They are one of the worst teams as far as spending draft capital in the on the O-line. So, you know, you wonder where your draft picks come. We ain't drafting O-linemen very high. <laughs> That's what that means. We're kind of in the middle of the road we're doing it, and the Bengals are even worse than us. But the Steelers spend a lot of money uh, making draft picks up high. That's what that means. Fourth column. Total unit weight. The heaviest to the lightest. So this is basically meaning the weight of, of all five guys projected to start. Ravens, 16th heaviest in the NFL. Middle of the road. Middle of the road. Uh, the Bengals are the first. Bengals got, remember the Bengals got Orlando Brown and our or Darius Mims. That's, that probably helps that. Steelers are the 19th, and the Browns are the 20th. So we're middle of the pack, which we're trending in the middle of the pack in a bunch of these categories. Uh, hopefully that doesn't go, well, I would say hopefully that does. With, with three new starters, if our old line's in the middle of the pack, I kind of take that. I kind of take that. Most athletic unit via their rads. I think we're going to be pretty good at this, because before I scroll down, <clears throat> Rosen Gardner was the fastest um, O lineman at the combine. We know how athletic Linderbaum is. Um, boy, he was the strongest guy when he came out of the combine. Ronnie's fairly athletic. Ben Cleveland will probably be the anomaly when it comes to RAS. So I'm thinking we're gonna have a good good RAS score here. Let's see, AFC North. I guess I was wrong. <laughs> uh, we are 19 highs in RAS. It says projected start and left guard Andrew Voorhees has an incomplete RAS. Now, I was thinking because of his bench, but well, he didn't get the run and do all the other stuff. So that's why. He didn't get the run. Uh, but Linderbaum should have had a good RAS. Um, Rosen Gardner should have had a good RAS. So he was the fastest old lineman. I know, I know Cleveland probably don't. And then Ryan, I don't know if they had RAS when Ryan came. But we're 19 highs. Hmm. Okay. We this needs to go down if we're gonna be better at outside zone. That's what all I'm saying. So, as much as I like being Cleveland, it's probably his last hoorah. We're probably gonna go find us a no, more athletic guard, either be a free agency or in the draft next year. I'd be willing to bet that. All right, we close to wrapping this thing on up. Weight adjusted RAS ranking. Let's see what this is. So I didn't have access to the weight adjusted uh, RAS. That's kind of where my pre trial ran out. But I think that would would have been a good number to see where how athletic our O line is compared to how heavy they are. So I don't know where we rank in that. But this is a good um, document to let you know where our O line stands before the season starts. We know we we replacing you know three guys. It's been beat all up over our head over and over again. I've said it here a bunch of other times. I'm sure a ton of other Ravens content creators have said it over and over again. Our camp really ramps up Saturday, so we'll see you know, how that starts to shape out. I've heard that they want to know like who's going to be the five early in camp so they can start the jail. I hope that happens. And um, to all of those that had a chance to get tickets to go to a practice, I salute you guys because uh, this guy was not. That fluky system kind of screwed me, but it is what it is, man. Y'all enjoy them practices. I appreciate y'all for coming out. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. And we'll see y'all in the next one, man. Peace.